13.8 billion years ago, what we know as our universe began with the hot Big Bang. The universe was extremely hot and dense, yet it was also expanding and cooling. It was made up of matter, antimatter, and radiation. The volume of our observable universe has grown to 46 billion light years in radius by now, and the limit of what we can measure corresponds to the light that is currently reaching our eyes. Even while that distance is huge, it's not infinitely large. It's merely the limits of what we can observe. What lies beyond that? What about the unobservable universe? Is it possible to determine whether the universe we live in is limited or infinite? That is, whether there is an end to what we refer to as the universe or whether it is infinite beyond our measurements and knowledge. In this documentary, we embark on a journey beyond the known, delving into realms of theoretical physics, mind-bending concepts, and the mysteries of what might exist beyond our cosmic doorstep. The Observable Universe To answer the question of what's outside the universe, we first need to understand exactly what we mean by the universe. Have you ever wondered how vast the universe is when gazing up at the night sky? What if I told you that it is so big that we are unable to see it all? The observable universe is the region that is visible to us. We are positioned exactly in the center of what appears to be a massive cosmic bubble. Let's dive into the fascinating world of the observable universe and see just how big it is. If you were to step outside right now, you'd only be able to see so far horizontally. Your vision would eventually reach the horizon, beyond which you would be unable to see much. You're aware, however, that life exists beyond the horizon. There is more on this planet than what you can see. Furthermore, as you look 360 degrees around you, it appears as though you are at the center of the world, even though you know that isn't actually the case. That is how it appears from any point on Earth. In the same manner, our view of the universe is limited to what is visible to us on Earth, and it is probably infinite in size. We can see only as far as our cosmic light horizon. Because we are unable to see the entire universe, it may appear to us that we are the center of the universe, but this is only an illusion. Light, which travels at a fast but finite speed, has simply not reached us from more distant parts of the entire universe. The entire universe and the observable universe are, therefore, very different from one another. All that we have seen or been able to see up to this point is the observable universe. On the other hand, everything that exists, has existed, or will exist is referred to as the entire universe. More specifically, the observable universe is the region of space visible to us from Earth. The term observable in this context does not mean that there is anything to be detected, nor does it apply to the ability of modern technology to detect light or other information from an object. It refers to the physical boundary defined by the speed of light. There is no signal that can move faster than light because the signals could not have reached us yet. There is a maximum distance known as the particle horizon, beyond which nothing can be observed. Astrophysicists sometimes make a distinction between the visible and observable universes, the former includes signals since the end of the inflationary epoch, while the latter includes only signals emitted since recombination. Cosmic Distances Measurement But how are distances in space measured? Astronomers use different techniques to measure cosmic distances. Basic trigonometry, similar to what you studied in high school math class, can be used for measuring things that are quite close such as those in our solar system and even in our small neighborhood of the Milky Way within 100 light years. With the help of the parallax method, the distance of faraway objects can be measured or estimated. When you look at your finger through your left eye while closing the right eye and then look at your finger through your right eye while closing the left eye, 
you would notice that the position of your finger seems to change with respect to the point on the wall. This is called parallax. By measuring this small change and knowing the distance between your eyes, you can calculate the distance to your finger, that's trigonometry. When it comes to measuring distances to other stars, there are no two eyes that could do the trick. Instead, the orbit of Earth around the Sun provides the baseline for these calculations. Simply, if you take a star's position once a year at one point in the sky and then again six months later, you will have a relative position of the nearby object in relation to the far more distant stars in the sky. Thanks to the Pythagorean theorem, you can determine the distance if you know the size of Earth's orbit and the angle of light in those two measurements. Nevertheless, a star's shift decreases with distance, making it difficult to measure this angle and requiring the use of some more advanced method for measurement. Once trigonometry is no longer a useful technique, astronomers look for Cepheid stars, which are extremely bright and common stars. These specific stars were first identified in 1794 and have an ability to pulse, becoming dimmer and brighter in predictable cycles. Surprisingly, the longer a Cepheid takes to pulse, the brighter the star is in reality. Similarly, the shorter the pulsation duration, the dimmer the Cepheid. What's more, these pulsations are directly related to their absolute luminosity, which occurs within well-defined and predictable time periods ranging from 1 to 100 days. Just like if you saw a candle right in front of you and another very far away, the one closer to you would appear much brighter. Hence, the true brightness of those stars can be determined, and consequently, their distance. By measuring nearby Cepheids and comparing the length of their pulsation period to those of those Cepheids that are farther away, Cepheid variables can be seen and measured to a distance of about 20 million light-years compared to a maximum distance of about 65 light-years for Earth-based parallax measurements and just over 326 light-years for the ESA's Hipparcos mission. They can serve as standard distance markers, constituting yet another crucial step on the cosmic distance ladder. Even though 20 million light years sounds like an enormous distance, the cosmos is 1,000 times bigger. Thus, we need to add another step to the ladder. This is when supernovae, especially those from specific binary star systems, come in rather handy. One star in these two star systems dies and turns into a white dwarf while the other star continues to exist. After that, the white dwarf starts to consume the surviving star and gets bigger until it has roughly 1.4 times the mass of the sun. At that moment, there is a massive explosion that releases more energy than entire galaxies and is visible over half of the observable universe. We refer to this as a Type 1a supernova. Astronomers can determine the absolute brightness of the explosion and consequently, the approximate cosmic distance to those distant galaxies because we know how much mass is exploding. At even greater distances, into the tens of billions of light years, the Hubble constant comes into play. Named after Edwin Hubble, this is the unit of measurement for the expansion of the universe. This is where the hold starts to get a little complicated. The universe has been getting bigger since the Big Bang kick-started the growth. Some suggest that there is something there causing the growth to slow down. This might be dark matter, which is invisible to conventional instruments. However, if the growth increases, it is possible that dark energy is driving the expansion at a quicker rate. Astronomer Harlow Shapley's observation in 1929 suggested that galaxies appear to be moving away from the Milky Way. Hubble found that the farther these galaxies are from Earth, the faster they appear to be moving. Although the phenomenon was formerly thought to be galaxies moving apart, astronomers now understand that what is really being seen is the universe expanding you would observe the same occurrence happening at the same speed everywhere in the universe. As better and more sensitive telescopes have been used to conduct the measurements, Hubble's original calculations have been refined over the years. 
According to observations made recently by several telescopes, the universe is expanding at different rates depending on where you look. The Planck telescope measures the expansion of the more distant background universe, which is expanding at a slightly slower rate of 41.6 meters per second or 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec, compared to the Hubble Space Telescope and Gaia Space Telescopes which measure the expansion of the nearby universe at 45.6 meters per second or 73.5 kilometers per second per megaparsec. It may be hard to imagine, but the universe is not only expanding at an ever-increasing rate in all directions at the same time, but the space between objects in the universe is also expanding. Everything is moving away from everything else, and it is moving faster and faster all the time. This interobject expansion and acceleration is related to dark energy, which is beyond the topic of this discussion. Therefore, the further away you look, the faster the galaxies are moving away from us. Galaxies that are very far away can be measured for distance by measuring their redshift, which tells us how quickly they are moving away from us. Astronomers use redshifts to measure the expansion of the universe and consequently, the distance to the oldest and most distant objects in our universe. But what is a redshift? It is often compared to the high-pitched sound of an approaching ambulance siren that becomes lower as it passes by and eventually goes away from you. The reason behind the change in an ambulance's sound is the phenomenon known as the Doppler effect. It's an excellent comparison because waves, which are similar to those in light, make up both sound and light. An object approaching Earth, like a star, is blue-shifted and is caused by light waves contracting and shifting into shorter wavelengths. An object moving away from the observer on Earth is redshifted. The observer perceives this phenomenon as the light waves stretching into longer wavelengths. These longer wavelengths have a larger shift and, in turn, faster velocity. Despite some objected concerns, the observable universe is a pretty significant size. It spans about 93 billion light years across. Nonetheless, we know that there is more universe out there because the observable universe is expanding at an accelerated rate. Unfortunately, we are simply unable to see beyond it because the light from those galaxies and objects has not yet reached us. Let's think about what that entails for a moment. If you are observing the edge of the observable universe right now, you are actually looking back in time to 13.8 billion years ago when the universe began with the hot Big Bang. What lies beyond? Imagine traveling at the speed of light. A journey to the edge of the observable universe would take you about 46 billion years. That's an incomprehensible amount of time. But what would happen if you could continue beyond that? Would you reach the edge of the universe, hit some kind of cosmic wall, or fall off into a great unknown? The truth is, we don't know for sure, but there are several intriguing possibilities to explore. One possibility is that the universe is infinite. This means that it goes on forever, and there is no edge. In an infinite universe, there would be an infinite number of stars, galaxies, and planets. The vastness of space would be beyond our comprehension. However, this raises the question of whether the universe is truly infinite or just so large that it appears infinite to us. If the universe is infinite, it has always been infinite, even at the moment of the Big Bang. This leads to fascinating implications about the nature of the cosmos and our place within it. Another possibility is that the universe is finite but unbounded. This means that the universe has a finite size, but you could travel in one direction forever without ever encountering an edge. This concept can be visualized using the analogy of the surface of a sphere. If you travel in a straight line on the surface of a sphere, you will eventually return to your starting point without ever encountering an edge. In this scenario, the universe could be curved in such a way that it wraps around itself, creating a finite but unbounded space. 
The shape of the universe is a topic of intense research and debate among cosmologists. There are three main possibilities for the shape of the universe. Open, closed, and flat. An open universe has a satellite shape and will continue to expand forever. A closed universe has a spherical shape and may eventually collapse back in on itself in a J-Big Crunch. A flat universe, which is currently the leading theory, will continue to expand forever at a steady rate. The shape of the universe is closely related to its overall density and the amount of dark matter and dark energy it contains. Multiverse Theories Beyond the observable universe, there may be other universes, an idea known as the multiverse. The multiverse concept suggests that our universe is just one of many universes, each with its own set of physical laws and constants. There are several different theories about how these universes might exist and interact with one another. One such theory is the bubble universe theory. This idea proposes that our universe is just one bubble in a vast cosmic foam of universes. These bubble universes could collide, merge, or influence one another in ways that we cannot yet understand. If this theory is correct, it could help explain some of the mysteries of our own universe, such as the nature of dark matter and dark energy. Another intriguing concept is the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. This theory suggests that every possible outcome of a quantum event actually occurs in its own separate universe. In other words, there are countless parallel universes, each representing a different version of reality. This idea challenges our understanding of reality and raises profound questions about the nature of existence and the role of consciousness in shaping the universe. The Role of Dark Matter and Dark Energy Dark matter and dark energy are two of the most mysterious and elusive components of the universe. Dark matter is a form of matter that does not emit, absorb, or reflect light, making it invisible to our telescopes. However, we can infer its presence from its gravitational effects on visible matter, such as stars and galaxies. Dark matter is thought to make up about 27% of the universe's total mass and energy content. Dark energy, on the other hand, is a mysterious force that is driving the accelerated expansion of the universe. It is believed to make up about 68% of the universe's total mass and energy content. The nature of dark energy is one of the biggest unsolved mysteries in cosmology. Some theories suggest that it could be a property of space itself, while others propose that it could be related to a new, undiscovered field or particle. The study of dark matter and dark energy is crucial for understanding the fate of the universe. If dark energy continues to drive the accelerated expansion of the universe, it could lead to a big freeze g or heat death -y scenario, where the universe becomes increasingly cold and dark as galaxies drift apart. Alternatively, if dark energy behaves differently over time, it could lead to a big rip -y scenario, where the expansion of the universe eventually tears apart galaxies, stars, and even atoms. Conclusion the infinite quest. The quest to understand what lies beyond the universe is a journey into the unknown. It challenges our perceptions of reality, space, and time. While we may never be able to fully comprehend the true nature of the cosmos, the pursuit of knowledge drives us to explore and push the boundaries of our understanding. As we continue to develop new technologies and theories, we may uncover new clues about the nature of the universe and what lies beyond. Each discovery brings us one step closer to answering some of the most profound questions about our existence. The universe is vast and mysterious, and our exploration of it is a testament to the power of human curiosity and ingenuity.